Awo Shalom Salantana Tena Yustalan greetings in eh Ras Yadinos Tafari Neng. I'm Wendam Yadam or Ras Yadinos Tafari of the Lion of Society. Now some of the um more conscious and conscientious sisters, daughters, mothers and wives have asked I to um give a reasoning and um, a commentary and perhaps even some of I and I opinions on the whole feminist movement and the so-called women's movement. And it's, <clears throat> it's vital that we uh, address this particular issue um, of the so-called feminist movement. What are our views on it? Well, some of the history of the feminist movement, no doubt, you can, um, you know, research and and look these things up on the internet and get some of the general quote history of it. But originally, let's look at the feminist movement in its original context, and we also have to look at that period of time, the late '60s and the, the 70s in its proper historical context. But that, as so many other things, is a little bit challenging to do, seeing we are living in a time of rewritten history, when recent history, the narrative, the true narrative of even recent history over the past 40 years has been so cleverly and even artistically rewritten. A new narrative has been presented. There's an old saying that history is often written by the winners. In other words, those who win basically are able to also write the history or, as in this case, rewrite the history. So we need to go back about 40 or so years in order to put this into its proper, first of all, historical context. Now, many of us who were not uh, mature in the 60s, those of us who might have been born towards the end of the 60s, um, and others who were born after the 60s and the 70s, so forth and so on, the only point of view that we have of the 60s, and in particular the various different movements of the 60s, such as the feminist movement, is either based on um, what we see on TV, what we have seen in movies that have been made, most of them, you know, well after that particular time. And we think that we understand what the 60s were about, protest and civil unrest and the Vietnam War and the so-called black power. Uh, well, <laughs> hold on for a moment. If you say black power, no. Most folks know in this revisionist history, they only know of the, quote, civil rights movement. They really don't really understand really what the black power or the black liberation struggle really was and what it was really all about. You see, the black power movement, the black liberation movement, and that's inclusive to a lower level, the civil rights would be the lower aspect of that black power movement because of what the, what the law sheep of the Beit Israel in other words, the lost black folks calling themselves um, NBC, Negro, Black, Colored, and by false, artificial, imposed European names, Smith, Jones, Johnson, and, and Jackson, if you please. What most folks know is what the rewritten history has presented to them. So the narrative, the true narrative of the 60s has not really been told by those who really were in that particular movement, and it's not known by most of the folks nowadays. I just wanted just to point that out before even getting into the, the main, our main commentary on the so-called feminist movement. 
and the women's rights movement. First of all, I want to say this for the record. Do we think that women in history have been fairly treated? Well, it's obvious that they have not. However, the feminist movement, let's, let's put this into proper context, originally, in its original sense, not in the modern sense that most folks think of the feminist movement and the women's movement. It's, it's a total different movement. And even many of those who are part of the movement and many of those who, who are in the know will tell you that the modern um, woman and the feminist movement, what it's about, what it stands for, is radically different than the original feminist movement. You see, first of all, let's start with the first movement to really move the system. The first movement to really move the system was the black people's movement, was the um, black power movement, the black liberation movement. And then, to a lesser extent, but they get the credit, is the civil rights movement. You see, most folks think that, well, Martin Luther King Jr., he won the day because of, you know, the march on Washington, so forth and so on. What they don't recognize is that this, at that particular time in America, there were two opposite, um, there, were, there, there were two opposite schools of thought. There was the black liberation slash um, black power movement um, slash the Nation of Islam and, and other so-called, from the, the government perspective, radical movements. And then there was the Southern Baptist, the um, civil rights, Martin Luther, Luther King movement. That, that was the next movement. They were more moderate. And so the white male patriarchy, which was the original target of the original white feminist movement, you see, the original target of the feminist movement was not war on all males, but it was war on white male patriarchy. You see, that has been lost today. You know what I'm saying? That has been totally lost today. So the original feminist movement, like so many of the other major movements, the, the black power movement, for example, there was the anti-war movement, so-called peace movement. The Native Americans, so-called Indians, they were moving for change and to reclaim that which was stolen from them and rightfully theirs by the so-called great white male so-called surrogate father. And then you had the daughters and the sisters and the mothers and, 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 some, and the wives of the white male, the white American, who, seeing the black groups, especially the black power groups, seeing the other groups that were standing up, a main group was the black power movement. You see, the black power movement and the anti-war movement. Those were the two, we can say, biggest movements. And then we get to see the rise of the Native American movement. And then along comes the, the white female seeing that she, too, has been oppressed, or we would say downpressed. So she began to rise up. So you have to, first of all, look at white supremacy. If you don't understand and comprehend what is white supremacy, we can define it in a couple of different intellectual ways. We can say from a biblical perspective, the Gentile world dominion. From a uh, political, historical perspective, we can say the Anglo-American European 
a movement established from the new world, so forth and so on. This this um, enterprise experiment, whatever they want to call it. You understand? Now, what's interesting about the feminist movement is that there were other movements like the suffrage, the suffragette movement, such as in England, where women were seeking to get the right to vote. The interesting thing about the 60s is that if you compare, if you will, the 60s to um, the time of like Frederick Douglass and go back to the 1800s and, and roughly around like the 1860s where when the black man was demanding the right to vote, we also get the white woman who also was disenfranchised. So, so let's understand this carefully. The original feminist movement was not this movement against all males. And so when, when, we, when we were asked to, um, first of all, to present our reasoning and some thoughts on this feminist movement idea, first of all, we can present our ideas and our thoughts, but it's very important for one to understand history. You see, and we don't have the opportunity in this particular vid to um, demonstrate some of the various historical clips, but no doubt if the sisters, if the sisterhood of the Rastafari and the Ethiopian Hebrew sisters, sisters, if, if this is really interesting to you, and I think it should be, because a trick has been played, you understand? A trick has been played um, by this so-called feminist movement, woman's movement. Instead of it being against the white male establishment, you see, this system here, you understand, 400 plus years in the Americas, and we can go back to Victorian England and connect it with England, so forth and so on, with the real roots of this daughter civilization. You see, that's Mother Babylon, Great Britannia, and this is the daughter over here. So England and America are like mother and daughter, respectively. So if we look at the role of woman, and, and, the, and the standing of woman and the treatment of woman, in particular of white woman in a white male dominated, what they call the white male land holding gentry, they alone had the, the complete say. Even though they were playing the racial game, you understand, and trying to claim that black people were not people, still they kept their own woman in a vastly um, subordinate position where the white woman barely had a say. You understand? So she was not treated as the black woman were. Of course not. So she was not that badly treated. However, in relation to her own white male, the white woman had very little to no say, you see. So the original aim of the feminist movement, which was a white female, you know what I'm saying, a white woman, a white Gentile Anglo-American movement, was aimed at white male patriarchy or white supremacy. But then a trick was played. You see, a lot of folks don't really recognize what this trick was or how this trick came about. And this trick emanated from what is called COINTELPRO. Do you know about COINTELPRO? Some of us might have heard some things about COINTELPRO which on one of the levels was to stop the rise of the black, of a black messiah. Um, uh, Edgar J. Hoover thought that it might be King. Edgar J. Hoover thought that it might be Malcolm X. But they were determined in the counterintelligence program. What does counterintelligence mean? It means to go against intelligence. 
So if you go against intelligence, what are you promoting? Foolishness. So now, 40 years later, if we are to look at the, the state or the status of black male and black female relationships, and then if we were to scroll back about 40 years when we didn't have all these, quote, civil rights, when we didn't have all this so-called integration, but one thing we did have, and you know what that was? We had the black family. We had black males and black females coming together with the idea of black is beautiful, taking pride in their God-given nature and who they were, taking pride and learning of where they had come from, learning of the motherland, learning about the whole international level, what was really going on around the world and the revolutionary movements on the, on the African continent being led by Haile Selassie I and by that generation of Ethiopians and, and Africans, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, um, uh, Jomo Kenyatta, you see what I'm saying? And so the black male and the black female, and, and you, you see, when ones talk about black power movement, the white male patriarchy got afraid and still gets afraid. But the first thing they're thinking about is all the wrong doing that they have done. And when they hear and heard of this black power movement, the first thing they thought is that the hour of judgment has come. The hour of judgment is here. They had to do something to stop this. Now, we're not going to say that the feminist movement or the white female feminist movement, because it really was a white female movement. Now, the trick was dividing and conquering the black family by tricking and again lying to the black female and making the black female that now had black power, black liberation, black is beautiful, the black family, black male, black female, and black children are going to, you know, we're going to come together again. You understand? And we're going to lift ourselves up. We're going to do for self. We're going to love each other. Not in the image of the beast. Not in the image of the white man. But with our afros. You understand? With our dashikis. With our afro picks and all of that. That was very, very dangerous. Now, the black power movement, the black liberation movement, and to even a lesser extent... The civil rights movement, because you have to remember, the civil rights movement represented a certain type of Negro. Let's, let's understand that it represented a certain type of Negro. Not all of the Negroes, blacks, coloreds, so forth and so on, were, were like the civil rights movement. You understand? Know you have to remember that it was the Southern Blacks, the Southern Baptists. You, you have to understand the connection with Massa. You understand? Know the connection of those particular Negroes. You see, our problem is thinking that all black people are the same black people. In other words, in the different conditions that they were coming from. It's like the blacks in the North had a different mentality we can see in the nation of islam we can see in in um um uh, malik al Haj al shabazz or malcolm x coming from a northern mentality you understand and then if we look at the southern blacks you understand that southern black mentality i hate to say it but it was still a lot more um quaint it was still a lot more um, shuffling, yes sir, no sir, so forth and so on, while you had the blacks above the Mason-Dixon line, you understand, know who had experience to a greater extent more freedom, more earned freedom, more earned equality, you see, 
Um, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> even though there were separate places for black people in New York, then there were, you know, there were separate places, even though there was still a lot of this racist, racial, you know, racism stuff going on in the North. I want you to keep in mind that, that the Southern Negro or the Southern Black is, is, is a different kind of black man or woman because of their experience than the northern one. Now, I know this in my personal family because many of um, my um, ancestors, my mama, uh, for example, coming up from the south, you can say first generation, and seeing that she'd been up here in New York prior to the whole 50s and 60s thing. I think she came up here, yeah, prior to the 50s and 60s thing. So she was in New York for a while. So I look at her, my mama, right? And then I look at her sisters and some of the other family that stayed in South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, uh, Florida, you know, Atlanta, all those places. It's a whole different mentality. You know what I mean? So when the family, the few times the family got together, I really saw the, the, the differences. And the thing I immediately recognized is that where you were from, it doesn't determine who you are, but it does shape a lot of your perceptions. So the blacks in the north, you understand, were, you know, whether it's New York, Chicago, so forth and so on, were a different breed to a greater extent than the ones in the, in the former slave South or the emancipated so-called South. And, and we need to understand that. In fact, it was the blacks in the North that were more militant, you understand, that were more willing, you understand, to fight to die if necessary, but also to kill for their freedom, just like the white man, just like any other man would do for his people. So the movement of, 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 of black power, and we, we didn't even talk on the, the West because it was also emanating out there, and that's a whole different, you have to remember that a lot of blacks, when they was leaving the dirty south back in the 17 and 1800s many of them went towards they were freemen they went towards kansas they went towards the west they went as far as california so that's a whole different mentality of of so-called black man woman and child than those who stayed on the plantation or stayed near massa's plantation so the civil rights movement was just one of many black movements. The, the, the